All right, check it out. This is a player scrambler, four by four. ATV we're gonna pick up here. Looks like it was last registered in 2016. Um, basically it says, have a player scrambler, lost bark, need gone. Um, bought a new CDI box and wrong coil, so there is no coil. I cleaned the carburetor, it just needs TLC. So I've never ridden one of these before, or owned one before. Um, they're pretty cool because they're 4x4. So it's like the sport version of the um, Polaris Sportsman, but it's a 4x4. So you get like the 4x4 plus tons of power with the 500cc engine. So this one should be pretty fun. We're gonna go look it over. I'm sure it needs more than a coil, but these are pretty easy to work on. So let's get her home. Um, it's snowing right now pretty good. So hopefully the roads aren't too bad, but you can see it's starting to snow. Perfect for a Polaris 4x4. So hopefully it snows quite a bit and we can get this thing running in time to enjoy the snow. Stay tuned, it should be a pretty fun video. All right guys, here is the beast. We're gonna be working on this thing today. Um, I probably picked this up probably a week ago now. Um, and I picked it up from the same guy I bought the TRX 450R from, the thousand dollar one that was painted purple. I got this machine from that guy. Um, it was up for like, I think 1500 bucks and I offered 900 bucks and he was like, yeah, sure. Um, so I got a pretty decent deal on it. These things go for around you know, $2,000 in that price range um, in working condition. This one obviously does not work. Needs a lot of work actually. So let's go over the whole machine and uh, see what this thing needs. Um, it doesn't have any spark, that's the main thing. So when I went and checked it out, I looked in here and it was missing, what is it missing? The CDI, which clicks into, let's see, where's the CDI click into? One of these, let's see. Yeah, it clicks into the three. This one right here, and then right here as well. The guy bought a new one for it right here, and he bought the two prong, which is the incorrect one. So I went online and bought the, um, the correct one for it. This one wouldn't work because you can see the wires that hook up are, are red and then black and red. And then on here, you can see there's three, black and red, red and then green, so there's a ground, and this one doesn't have the ground. So, yeah, that, that CDI doesn't work. Also, it's missing the voltage regulator, which hooks into the yellow and red, and then the yellow wire. Um, it's basically, it looks kind of like this box right here. That one's for the reverse. This one's for the voltage regulator. I'm not sure why it's missing, kind of strange, but um, yeah. And then also the coil. So the coil mounts somewhere up over here and then goes down to the head. You can see the head is right down here. Let's see a good, yeah, right here. You can see the head on this side. So it's missing the coil as well. Um, other than that, I don't think it's missing too much. Here's the plate for the front. This goes on here. Oh, and then it's missing the headlight. Headlights, I should say. On these, there's like a dual headlight, and I believe these are the plugs for it right here. It's just missing those as well. But other than that, I don't think it's missing anything else. Everything else is here. Let's do a quick walk around. Oh, it is missing something. Well, not really, but um, we've got this uh, fuel pump that I don't know if that works yet, but that is mounted to the front of this thing as well. So we have to hook that up somehow today as well. Let's take a quick look at the machine. I believe we need to do an oil change on this thing too. But let's just quick look it over and see what this thing looks like. Tires on it are not too bad. Front ones are a little bit worse than the back, but the back ones are pretty beefy. You can see there's quite a bit of tread left. Um, needs new battery. Battery doesn't hold the charge. So, I don't know if the electric start works yet, so we'll have to test that out today. Um, it's got like a little compartment right here. wonder what's in there. I'm kind of afraid to look in there. Nothing in there. Interesting. Brake rotors are really rusty, you can see. Chains really rusty in there. You can see the chains really rusty. 
pipes are all rusty. These Polaris pipes are always rusty. Polaris needs to do something about that because they rust out so quickly in Wisconsin. I don't know why they haven't figured that out, but every single Polaris I've owned has a rusty pipe. I mean, you can paint them, it's not a big deal, but a lot of the time, a lot of the times they split and um, have an exhaust leak, so yeah. <laughs> Polaris should actually do something about that, make them stainless steel or something, but yeah, that's, uh, they're probably too cheap to do that. Other than that, uh, let's see if the back brake works. Yeah, that kind of works. I don't know why that's up so high. Look how high that is. Uh. Let's see if it works. No, definitely doesn't work. Needs to be re -bled. Do the front brakes work? Front brakes work. Let's see. Yeah, front brakes work really well. Well, at least we've got one brake that works on this thing. Let's take a look in here. What's going on? So the CB axle right here, I know this was a little bit wobbly. So that could probably be replaced. The other one's good. Not too wobbly at all, nice and tight in there. Replacing these CV axles are pretty easy. I think they're like 50 bucks or 60 bucks for a new one. Let's see if it's got any cooling in this thing. Any cooling in there? Oh yeah. Well, that's good. At least there's some cooling in there. That is a good sign. We'll check the oil next here. Let's see, where's the oil on this thing? Should be over here. Oh yeah, right here. So, funny story. I've never owned a Polaris Scrambler 500 4x4 before. The only time I was going to buy one was a couple years ago, and I actually drove an hour and a half to go buy one. It was up for $1,200. Mint condition, ran, drove, perfect. Everything was good on it, had four by four. And uh, I got there and there was another guy buying it. <laughs> that uh, was a bad day. That was a very bad day. I was so excited to buy it. Pulled up and the guy sold it out from underneath me. He said, yeah, come on, come on down. Um, I'll hold it for you. Got there. And the other guy was on it, and he took it home, loaded it up right in front of me. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so don't be that guy. Don't do that to somebody, because it, it wrecks your day when that happens. It was, it was uh, really, really bad. <laughs> was not too happy about that. But now we have one, a couple years later. First one I've ever owned, so we'll see if we can get this thing running. And uh, we'll, we'll take it through some snow. We've got lots of snow here in Wisconsin, so so we can really test out that 4x4. But anyway, let's check the oil on this thing. Thought you'd guys enjoy that story. I don't always win on picking stuff up on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Does that look pretty good to you guys? Take a look on my finger. Oh yeah, pretty clear. It's also a good sign. But let's take off the seat, take a look underneath here. See what we're working with here. Man, the seat's in excellent condition. No rips on that baby. That's a nice seat. Polaris seats are not cheap either. All right, get the fuel pump out of here. Gas line of some sort. We're gonna have to kind of piece this thing together. Looks like somebody looks like somebody was taking it apart at one point and just didn't put it back together. We've got a big crack going along the whole back fender. Looks like some guy just used some zip ties to glue that back together. That's not a big deal. What I probably will do is take some plastic um, weld and then zip tie it and then weld it up. Not a big deal. And then, um, we've got the carburetor in here. Take a look at that. Is it the original one or is it an aftermarket carb? The aftermarket carburetors always have problems, so I hope it's 
the original one. Can't get it out of there. It looks to be original, it doesn't look brand new or anything. You can kind of tell the aftermarket ones have like shiny aluminum, cheaply made. Ooh, looks like one bolt for the clutch is open right there. So water could leak right in there. Hopefully all the rest of them are tight. Yeah, it looks like that's all good in there. Alright. I think that's all this plastic comes off of here too. We'll have to take all this stuff off. Yeah. We'll just take off the whole piece of plastic, I think. Take a look at the engine. Gotta clean up the gas tank too. Whew. Smells like old gas in there. I don't think this thing's been run for a long time. Oh, here's the choke. Let's see if that works. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so let's um let's see if it's got compression here. That's a good thing to check for. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's got compression. Pretty good compression actually. Awesome. Does it shift? Sounds like it does. That's neutral. Reverse. Does the clutch spin? Yep. Forward. Does it lock up? Yep. Cool. I think there's only high neutral in reverse in this thing, no low. The player sportsmen have the, the low gear as well. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. All right, first step, let's uh, hook up the battery to it and see if the starter works. I think that's the first step. Um, these things are coming in the mail in about an hour, so we'll plug those in and see if we get some spark. All right, batteries are really expensive for this thing. That's why I offer 900 bucks, because when a battery is uh, not included with a deal, just figure another $50 to $100 for a battery, which sucks, but it is what it is. Let's hook up the battery charger to it. Or the jumper, I should say. Let's see if we got any uh, power. All right, turn that guy on. Let's see here. Please be power. Nothing? Hmm. No power. That's not good. This is a ground, maybe it needs a ground over here. These are grounds too. Hmm. Let's see. Nothing. Let's see if it, maybe the neutral edge doesn't work. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, there, the neutral light came on. <laughs> I don't know how that worked. <laughs> what the heck? Maybe it wasn't a neutral all the way. That could be. Well, it's good now. Awesome, well, that's one thing down. What we're gonna do before we turn it over too much is get to the, get to the spark plug, put some oil down the spark plug hole, cause I don't know how long this thing's been sitting. I don't know if there's ice in the engine. I don't know if the spark plug's been out of it. I don't really know too much about it, so. We're gonna get the plastic off, the gas tank off, get to the head, check out that um, spark plug, get some oil down there, and then we can crank it over. All right, we got the plastics kind of off of here, 
And uh, thank God there's a spark plug in there. If you guys look right in there, I don't know if it'll pick it up or not. Right in here, you can see the spark plug poking out. That is a good sign. Hopefully, water did not get in there. If it did, that means the piston's junk. Probably. <laughs> and there's probably gonna be rust in there. If the spark plug's nice and tight, we're probably gonna get lucky, and it's probably fine. So, let's take a wrench and uh, see if the spark plug's tight. <laughs> Fingers crossed it is. Ah, it wasn't tight, I can tell you that. Listen to that on it. Oh, oh, it is tight. <laughs> awesome. It just wasn't on it. Probably do a compression test right away, too. See what we got going on for compression in here. Work plug. Not too bad. It was running a little rich. Not horrible. I'm just happy it was tight in there. That is a good sign. Let's get some oil and dump some oil down there. Got the funnel in there. I put some oil down there. We're just going to thin it out with some WD-40. Making a little cocktail for it. You always got to use the WD-40. It's the miracle cure for everything. Alright, let's see if this sounds a little bit better. We'll have to work at that a little bit. I don't know if it's a ground issue or what. All right, we got the wiring figured out. Um, the starter wire was loose, and then the ground's right here. I bolted down, so that helped a lot. So I wanna check out the clutch behind here. I don't know if rain got to it or what, so let's just take this off quick. Not many bolts holding that thing on. Is there one more somewhere? There we go. Might have to take off the plastics in order to get this thing off. All right, I had to take off the footrest. Um, there is four bolts in here. But uh, now, this can come off, I think, hopefully. Oh, well, good thing we took that off. Just check that out. The belt's not even on it. Oh man, that's rough in there. The belt is not even on. So yeah, that's uh, that's not good. On that thing. We'll have to take that thing off in order to get the belt back on. I wonder if there's a grease fitting for the back of that. Hard to see. I don't think there is on Polaris. But we'll zip this thing off of here. Take this whole secondary clutch off. But yeah, good thing we opened that up. <laughs> we wouldn't have been moving too much. All right, we got the belt off. It actually doesn't look too bad. 
If you look around, it's not cracked or anything. It doesn't look too bad. Just a little bit bent, you can see where it was twisted in there, which, I don't know. It's, we'll try it out, but it might need a new belt. The edges are a little frayed too. Not horrible. It'll probably work. Probably just won't go as fast as it's supposed to go, but uh, we'll test her out. Good thing we took this thing off. I was able to clean out the inside here too a little bit. You can see some corrosion going on. So we'll try to save the clutch. I lubed up in here. I know it takes dry lube, but I don't have any. So we just use wet lube for right now. It was all ice and stuff in there. So we'll see what happens. All right, cover's all back on, good to go. We're probably gonna end up getting a new belt for it, um, but for testing purposes, uh, for the first ride, we'll test out with that belt on it. I'm sure it won't last too long. But um, I think we're gonna move on to the carburetor next. Probably needs to be cleaned out before we do anything else. Um, carburetor's right here, so we can get to that, tear that apart, and see what's going on with that. Looks a little crusty in there. Let's get that off. It looks like the throttle cable's connected right here. Those three screws come off and then the throttle cable comes off. All right, we got the carburetor off. Wasn't too bad. Just held on by this little pin right here. So let's open this up, see what's going on. Uh, the previous owner said that he cleaned this out. To be honest, does not look like it. You can see all the grime in there. We'll see what the inside looks like. But I don't think this has been cleaned out for a while. We'll see. There's a lot more wrong with this quad than I thought there would be. It was advertised as only needing a CDI. So, needs a lot more than that, I can tell you that. Yeah, that carburetor was not cleaned out. It's gunked up really bad. That's a weird looking mechanism in there, isn't it? <laughs> what the heck is that thing? That is weird. I've never seen anything like that before. That is one weird mechanism. <laughs> what the heck? That's very strange. I guess you learn something new every day. All right, we'll get the main. We'll get the main jet out of here. Polaris, what are you doing with your carburetor? Weird stuff. Yeah, this is probably gonna go right in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is pretty rough. Let's take a look at the top. We'll deal with that pilot later. I think the pilot jet's stripped out. That one's stripped out. Both those screws are stripped out. Get the vice grips out. See if that can take care of it. There we go. Get that one out and then continue this process. All right, we got both of these out with the vice grip. Let's see what the diaphragm looks like. Better be good because we need it to pump the gas. So far, it looks pretty good. Man, 
it's that crusty in there. <laughs> the slide like doesn't go up. Yeah, there's no way this was cleaned. Feels pretty rubbery still. Not too bad. Pretty gunked up. We'll get this choke out of here. And I think we'll just put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Cooking away in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna set it to about 30 minutes. Alright, we got the carburetor all cleaned. I have the ultrasonic cleaner all put back together. That should be good to go now. Let's install this and then get the fuel pump hooked up to it. Alright, we got the gas tank on and then the uh, carburetor on underneath there. I get all the gas lines hooked up to the fuel pump up here. I think that's the correct way to put this. Pretty sure. Um, we can see we've got a line coming in. Um, the carb the one for the actual pump going to the carburetor, and then a line going out to the carburetor. That's kind of how that pump is set up. And then I took up the clutch belt again. I don't feel comfortable putting the clutch belt on there. It's just really, really worn. So, I don't want to rack the clutch even further. So, we're going to leave that off for right now and grab a new one before we ride this thing. But, we got some new parts in the mail finally. They came. We've got the voltage regulator in this box. We've got the CDI right here with the three prongs. You can see. Three prong. Unlike the two prong other one we got. Then the coil, and then a new spark plug. So let's install this stuff and uh, see if everything bolts up. Should be pretty exciting. Hopefully we get spark after this. All right, let's start with the CDI. So this one goes into here. You can see green, black, and black and red, and then green, black, black and red. So we'll plug this guy in right here. Hopefully it plugs in. There we go. And this one plugs into there. You can see there's a black and red, black and, there's a white and red, white and red, and then white. So this goes right into here. Like that. So those two are in. I don't know where this mounts to, probably right over here somewhere. And then the brown goes to ground. So this is a ground. And then I believe this one goes over to here. Let's see. I think this one goes over to here. If it fits. Black, these are black. And then this one goes to the spark plug. So that hooks it into the spark plug. And I believe this one goes. I'm gonna put this in the mountain right here, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> not too sure. But we'll get it all bolted up and then we'll get the coil on. Alright, so we've got everything hooked up. We've got the coil hooked up and grounded to the frame. I uh I took a little bit of the frame off just so we had a better ground. And then we've got like <laughs> we've got like 80 uh, wires going to this thing for the ground. And then we've got the CDI going to a ground right here. And then we've got the other piece. Oh, this has to connect to the coil somewhere. Forgot about that one. That connects right here. Oh, maybe, yeah, it goes up into here. It goes like that. And then the coil wire is over here. And then we've got the voltage regulator right here. Brown going into there, red going into there, and then um, yellow and red, and then yellow. So everything is hooked up, looks like. We just have to hook up the key switch and the electric start, and we should be good. Just double checking everything before we try to attempt to get spark on this thing. 
All right, we got the battery pack on there. Let's see if we get some spark. We can reach that far. Not too sure. All right. Spark plug is right there. Here we go. Oh yeah, baby. Good spark. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, you know what's next. Let's get the gas tank hooked up. Let's get some gas flow into the carburetor. And uh, let's see if this thing starts up. All right, everything's hooked up, spark plug's hooked up. We're gonna choke it for right now and then probably put some gas down the carburetor directly down there. Let's see if I can squirt a little gas in there. All right, here we go, first start. Let's see what happens here. We're not getting any gas pumping. We're gonna put the gas directly to the carburetor, see what happens. We've got gas going directly to the carburetor, Let's see what happens. All right, so I figured out why the neutral light would go off. Um, it was a switch up here, and I could never figure it out. It took me so long to figure it out, I was trying to diagnose everything. And it was a little switch up there that you just need to wiggle. So um, we got that figured out. Let's try giving this another go. Let's see if it'll start up this time. Put a little gas down here. Pouring gas out of the cylinder. Oh, awesome. The fuel pump is working. So let's uh, hook that up. Start it up right away. It's just not idling, so. I saw gas pumping out of the fuel pump. So. All right, let's see. All right, so we got this baby fired up today. Um, apparently, the CDI, the coil, and the voltage regulator worked, so that was awesome. 
got good spark and uh, it fired right up. For some reason, it's not staying running. So I'm, it's either you know the fuel pump is not pumping enough gas towards it, or something in the carburetor is off, probably. Or another thing is it could have followed the spark plug because we put oil down the cylinder. Um, one of those things. So we'll probably take out the spark plug, check that, and uh, see if it's followed. But other than that, I think we're on the right track. So we've got a couple more things to do. We've got to get this thing running consistently. We've got to get a new belt for it. Yeah, then put it all back together. This thing should run pretty good. And then obviously we have to test out the transmission, make sure that's all good, and take it for a nice long ride. But uh, yeah, we made some good progress today. Pretty happy with it. Um, what we're probably gonna do is take a look at the spark plug quick. Take my little camera, stick that down the cylinder and see what we can find. I did notice that when I went to give a throttle, it would just die right away. So we'll have to diagnose that and see what's up with that. Um, I'm thinking it might just be the spark plug following out. So let's start digging into it and uh, see if we can find this problem. All right, we got the gas tank off and the plastics off. I'm gonna take a look at the spark plug and see what's going on with that. Um, I'm thinking maybe it's followed. Let's get this off of here. Maybe we lost spark, I'm not sure. Something's going on though. Huh. Spark plug looks really clean. We'll have to see if we're getting sparks still. In order to do that, we have to put the plastics back on though. So, let's do that. Alright, we've got this uh, little camera. We'll turn this on. Let's see what's going on inside of the cylinder here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but... There's a little light at the end of this with the camera, so let's see what's going on in here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hmm, what's that thing? Hopefully that was just a place for the valve. see cylinder wall looks pretty good I don't know if you guys can see that or not but you can see the looks like it was recently honed you can see the crisscross pattern in there doesn't look like any scoring on the cylinder at all which is good I don't think there's anything wrong with the piston or the cylinder all right, we're gonna quick check and see if we lost spark here. So keep an eye on the spark plug. Kinda zoom in there. See if we get some spark. Let's see what happens here. Looks like we lost. Like we don't have any spark here. Maybe it was fouled. Let's see what happens if we change out the spark plug. That's interesting. Huh, that's not good. No spark again. Not good at all. Huh. It's not good. Try this one more time here. We 
we lost spark again. That's not good. I don't know what that could be. Let's see, we've got the CDI. Huh. We'll see if we're getting spark to the coil, I guess. Man, that sucks. <laughs> I guess we can check every connection and then uh, just go from there. All right, looks like we're not getting any power from the red or the red and black going to the um, CDI. So that's not good. It means probably our trigger coil down there is not working properly. So if we've, we crank it over, we can see zero volts. AC or DC. So that's not good. And that's from both the red going into there. So I think we're gonna have to take off the cover over here and see what's going on with that trigger coil. I believe it's right underneath this cover. I think, yeah. You can see the wires coming from the stator are right here. So something's going on with that. All right, let's see if this cover comes off here. I don't know if there's oil behind here or not. can't remember. I don't think there is. Probably gonna be water behind it though. I'm guessing there's water behind it. And those wires are corroded. Just a guess. All right, they're all off. Let's see. This thing can come off of here. Let's see if we're stuck on something. Hmm. There we go. All right, so the trigger coil is right there. That thing. Looks like these surfaces are rusty, so that's probably not great. Probably not getting much contact. See the surface right here? It's all rusty. That needs to be cleaned. Because that's what uh, makes contact with the trigger coil. We'll turn over this engine and just see what's happening. We'll get a flashlight down there, see if we can see in there. All right, let's see what we can see down there. Oh yeah, it's just like, there's not much metal on the trigger. Hard to see in there. I don't know if you guys can see here. Yeah, there's not really a good angle to get in there. Right down there. Hard to see. All right, so this is the plate that contacts the trigger coil to set the spark. Um, we're gonna sand that down a little bit. I already began sanding it down, but it was really gunked up with stuff. So I don't think it was getting any connection, really. The only part that concerns me is I had spark before. So I don't know why it lost it. I don't know if it just kept on getting gunked up or what. All right, we'll wipe that off and see. All right, we just got done sanding. You can see it's now a metal surface, <laughs> not gunked up with anything. And then I tried cleaning that little point coming out of the trigger coil, but that thing's hard to get to. So. We're going to put it back on. Um, you can't do electric start unless this cover's on. You can see the Bendex gear right here um, shoots out. So that would just shoot right out and probably grind the gears if we tried to start it without the cover. So let's put the cover back on, put a couple bolts in there, and test it out again. Hopefully we get spark. If not, I'm guessing it's the trigger coil. That's bad. All right, so I put the cover back on, and we still weren't getting spark. 
took it back off and we just I decided to take out the trigger coil and here it is it looks actually like it's in pretty decent condition um, I cleaned out the little connector connection and you can see it's got metal still on it um, it's worn down a little bit but it's still not bad we'll try it again I'm gonna do a quick ohm reading on the trigger coil all right looked online it should be around like 97 ohms uh, plus or minus 20 percent on the ohm reading for the trigger coil Let's see it's not getting a good reading here we're around like 90 so we're good um, we're gonna test the black and red wire from the stator as well and see what those are the yellow we know are good the yellow has uh, voltage coming out of it when you turn it over I just want to see what the red and black and red have I think it should be around 19 ohms all right so trigger coils good let's check the red and black and red and white wire going to the CDI oh wait where is it right here these two so we can see red and black and then red we're not getting any reading yeah no reading so something's going on with the red wire and the red and black wire so that is not good <laughs> either they're cut or not connecting or something's going on because there's no continuity at all so let's go check out the red wire follow that down and see where that goes to the stator here all right so that goes into here and then into here let's see here oh <laughs> there's our problem check that out that red wire is cut aha that is why we weren't getting spark that's funny so the continuity test works again where does that go to though there must be a red wire tucked in here somewhere <laughs> we'll get that uh reconnected and see if we get spark that's that's funny oh the simple things so hopefully this thing will run great once we get this back together heat shrink right here we made the connection let's just heat this up and Alright, now we just have to connect this wire up to there. Alright, everything's put back together. Let's see if we got some spark now. Alright, hopefully we do. Let's see here. Oh, we don't have it hooked up, though. Alright, here we go. Hopefully we have spark here. No spark. What the heck? What is going on here? Oh, no spark. Okay, let's double check everything. All right, so I got all the wires connected, good to go. And I figured out that it was the kill switch. <laughs> the kill switch is connected to this black wire to the coil. And for some reason, I disconnected that and we got spark, so. I think the kill switch is just bad in this thing. So we're just gonna leave this disconnected and bypass the kill switch. And uh, that's just the way we're gonna do it. <laughs> Cause we got great spark now. And I'm guessing it'll idle too. All right, we have most of the machine back together. Um, I did disconnect the kill switch again, but the machine can't turn off if the kill switch is disconnected. So what I did was take off this cover right here. I think I read some forums and underneath this cover, there's a two wires that connect. And basically when those two wires connect, it shuts up the machine. Um, so I think that's like adjusting the slack and the idle. So I took that off. The two wires were touching. So I think that would kill the machine. The two wires right there, see? See those two wires right there? When the throttle is too loose, those two wires connect to each other. 
And I think that's what was causing our um, kill problem. All right, here we go. Let's try her out. All right, runs pretty good. Idles perfectly, nothing wrong with that. The kill switch uh, still doesn't work. The throttle was not the problem with that. So I don't know what's going on with the kill switch. Obviously it's not working, so we'll have to diagnose that, but I'm just happy it runs and idles, so that's awesome. I'm thinking we fixed the, the red wire that was broken by the um, stator. I think that was the problem, that was the culprit. So good thing we looked down there and we're able to fix that. We have like great spark now, so I think that was definitely the problem. What we're gonna do now is uh, try to attempt to ride this thing. We'll probably put the clutch belt on just for fun and uh, see what happens. <laughs> what can go wrong, right? We pretty much have everything back together here. I put the little hood on here, and then I put the belt on. I just noticed that the belt doesn't really fit too well. You can see it's coming up above the secondary clutch. It's not really fitting in that groove. See how it's raised above there? So I don't know how long this belt's gonna last, but that should not be like that. That should be seated right in there. All right, so I, I wired up a temporary kill switch coming from the spark plug. So we can just ground that out to the frame to, to kill the machine. I can't figure out why the kill switch isn't working, but uh, we'll, we'll diagnose that later. We've got the battery right here. Let's throw this guy in. Just gonna go right underneath here. Let's see. Will it fit though, is the question. Of course not, of course it won't fit. Just uh, zip tied it around there to hold that in place. Check and see if the battery works here. Oh yeah, we have power. Sweet. You can see the belt's way too big for it. You can see it coming up. That would be hitting the uh, the cover right there for sure, so we don't want that grinding. Um, we'll pick it for a test drive, see what happens. Well, 
went in reverse. Let's see if it goes forward here. Four by four is not working. Running pretty good though. Shifts pretty smoothly too. Everything works except the 4x4. Four four. I think she's running out of gas, but uh, yeah, everything works except the 4x4, like I said before. So I'm pretty happy with that. The belt is way too big, that's why it takes a while to, uh, to come on, but I think if we get a new belt, this thing will rip pretty good. So the 4x4 is controlled by the switch up here, right here. And then it's controlled by the wires in here. So we've got gray, white, gray, gray, brown, brown, and black. And then these go down into here. And the one black one goes to the key. And the gray up here, take a look at this. We've got gray and white and brown and white right up here. And then what do we have there? Gray and brown. And that comes down to here and goes down into this wire right here. So let's clean those connections out right up here. And uh, we'll have to take a voltmeter and see if we're getting any voltage to those. With... All right, I'm up here by the four wheel drive. You can see there's three little prongs in there. And right now we're not getting any power when we hit the switch. So the power is not transferring to the other prong. So these look pretty dirty if you look in there. So we're gonna clean those out and then clean off the switch. This is what the switch looks like. You can see that plate is what makes the connection. So we're gonna clean off that plate and then the little prongs in here and see if uh, that, and then we'll see if that does anything. All right, so finally, after probably an hour and a half of trying to diagnose this thing, I finally got this thing to shut off on its own. Got the kill switch to work. 
and uh, it's all good to go now. So basically what it was, I looked up a uh, wiring diagram, followed the black wire, which is the black wire leads to the spark plug right here. That was grounding out somewhere. So I had to follow it all the way through. Uh, I thought first it was this, uh, the little switch in there. Wasn't that, disconnected that. Then I thought it was the kill switch, wasn't that. And then I found out that it was the um, reverse override for the 4x4. That little panel in here is grounding out. So you can see the black wire right here. I disconnected. That was connecting to the gray and orange wire. That was actually becoming positive when I would put that in there. So it's it was making that positive, which is supposed to be nothing going into the coil. So that's why it didn't start. So we disconnected this. Uh, we've got to get a new override switch um, mechanism. So that's why it wasn't working. But now, when you go to turn it on, it's on the wrong position. And then, shuts off. Probably need to choke it here. And then, watch this. Kill switch works too. So everything works the way it's supposed to work. Which is awesome. So, ah. Uh, Wiring kind of sucks. I hate doing wiring, but got to do it sometimes. So now all we have left to do is the back brake. We got to bleed that. Uh, we got to get a new belt for it. And then the correct battery. And we should be good to go. This thing's all done. Oh yeah, and the 4x4 works now. So if you turn it on, check this out. And then you can see the all-wheel drive light just lit up. So I got that rewired and working. So everything's good to go. But yeah, um, I'm gonna order up some parts. We ordered up the belt, we got a battery for it, we've got some oil for it to do the oil change. So we're gonna be doing all that stuff today um, and then taking it for a ride with the GoPro. Uh, so stay tuned, should be a pretty fun video. We'll jump right into it. All right, so it looks like the battery fits, that's good. It looks like the positive was on the wrong side, so that kind of sucks. Um, so we had to turn around the battery, but that shouldn't be too bad. Cable still fit. So let's get this thing filled up with acid, and uh, let's see if it works. All right, if you guys have never used one of these batteries before, they're pretty easy to do. Take out this little breather tube. Should pop right off. Otherwise, Pops right off, remove this thing, remove that sticker, these are going to be the caps that you put in the top, put some screws and then the breather line for the outside of it. Here's the acid, it's going to fill up the battery. So we just have to cut off the top. This battery was actually pretty cheap. It was like, I think like $42. It's not too bad. All right, then we're gonna stick that guy on there. Oh, I think I cut it too big. Crap. Fit that like that. Then we're gonna fill up these evenly. You can see every level is at the upper mark and we are exactly out of acid. So that's perfect, we're gonna put these caps in and then we're gonna charge this thing up for I think eight hours with a trickle charger. All right, battery's all charged, going in. Probably gonna have to put a strap around that. 
All right, we got the brand new battery installed. Next up on the list before we ride this thing is to do the oil change. We got a factory spec oil filter. FS708 is the, is the product number for this thing. Um, that's supposed to be the right fit. Hopefully it is. We got some VHT roll bar paint. I want to paint up uh, the foot pegs. I mean, they're not bad, but a little spray paint on those will make them look brand new. And then we already painted the pipe with some high temp paint. It turned out pretty nice. Remember it was all rusty before. So we painted that up. Looks really good. I mean we can touch up these, but these racks are not bad at all. But yeah, let's do this oil change. Uh, this thing takes two quarts of oil. The drain plug is underneath here somewhere. We'll have to look for that. All right, let's start this thing up a little bit. Get the oil hot. Starts right up. Sounds pretty good. All right, we'll let this warm up for probably like five minutes and drain the oil. All right, it's all warmed up. What most people do on the scramblers, because the engine only holds like a cup of oil, most people just drain the oil pan right down here. There's a little screw and then they just take out the filter and drain that. Um, I'm gonna actually drain the engine out. There's a little screw on the side right down here. If you look, hard to see. But right there, we can take that out. So let's see if we can get that out and if any oil drains out of here. Most people just leave it. Let's see if there's any oil in it. Oh yeah. You can see it draining out now. So that thing's only supposed to hold like a cup of oil. Looks like it's holding more than that. Doesn't look too bad. It's a little black. Not horrible. It's not milky, that's a good sign. Is it chunky? Nope. No metal in it. It's also a good sign. Alright, we're gonna let that drain for a bit and then go to the oil pan. Alright, now we're by the oil pan. You can see the little drain screw right there. It's a 14 millimeter. Just gonna pop that loose. Jeez. That was on there. That is for sure. Let's see if anything comes out. Oh, that's a little blacker. Got a little gunk on the magnet. Not too bad. Clean this guy off of here. Gonna feel for metal chunks. Feel smooth. Awesome. This is right up here. So let's try to get that guy out of here. We've got a filter wrench. Not much in there. Here's the old filter. Oh, it is a Polaris filter. You can see. 
So this is probably straight from the factory like this. It's a good thing we're, uh, we're changing this oil. Most people don't buy Polaris filters when they do their own, their own uh, oil change. They're a little bit more expensive. But uh, the filter didn't look too bad. Here's the new filter. Uh, you can see it's a factory spec. Brand new. Let's just put a little oil around the gasket. Just gonna screw that guy on. All right, filters in. Let's get some oil going down there. All right, we're gonna be using Lucas Oil 10W40. Again, two quarts. I don't know if the oil tank is gonna take two quarts, or if we have to start it up. Guess we'll find out here pretty soon. Quartz. Cap back on. Alright, we'll start this thing up and let this warm up for a bit. that oil circulating. All right, next up is the back brake. You can see when you push it down, it doesn't do much. So I don't know if it's locked up or what's going on. So we're gonna try bleeding this back here. We're gonna try to uh, take this little guy off of here and see if any brake fluid pumps through. If it does, we can just refill up the canister with some dot three right here. I think it's pretty much empty right now. Yeah, I mean, there's not much in there. So we bought some DOT3 brake fluid. That is a small canister. <laughs> All right, we're back by the caliper. It's a little, uh, one fourth inch socket on here. Oh, that was really loose. Oh, there's brake fluid coming out of it. Let's see if we can pump it. All right, we're back up by the front. I don't think anything's pumping through. As you can see, the level isn't going down. So we're gonna take off this guy and see if any fluid's pumping through here. Oh, there we go. So there's, I think there's a blockage. All right, so I figured out why nothing was coming out. I, I untwisted the wrong bolt. This is for the front brakes. So we don't have to worry about that one. That one checks out the front brakes work back here. So that's awesome. And then this one's for the back one. So now, when you pump it, it comes out. We just have to uh, bleed this system. Alright, I was able to get the caliper off. 
We're going to see if these pads are closing. It doesn't feel like they are. Looks like they're pretty uh, worn down in here too. That could be the problem as well. Yeah, not much padding left. So we'll see if the screwdriver gets tight when we push on the brake. Alright, let's uh, spray off this brake rotor using some brake cleaner and a green pad. See if we can get some of this rust off. It's pretty heavily rusted. So the brakes are working in the back. They're all blood and everything, but uh, the brake pads are too thin. So I ordered up some new brake pads for it. They're gonna come here Friday. Right now it's Wednesday, so we'll have to wait for those, but the braking system is working. But uh, let's paint up some of these foot pegs here. A little BHT roll bar. And the next one. All right, that looks a little better. It's uh, coming along. All right, we got the new belt. Let's see if that fits on here. Here's the old belt compared to the new one. You can see the old one's way bigger. It's a lot better fit. You can see it goes down into the groove. Unlike the other one, the other one sat above it really high. So that looks pretty good. Alright, trying to repair this crack. I put uh, three stitches in right here, and that's holding it pretty good. We're going to take like a plastic weld and go on the back of it and just put a little bit on the back just to hold that in place. But for right now, that's that's holding it pretty good. Make them a little bit bigger. All right, this is the plastic weld we're using. Just have to heat it up, um, as it's really cold out. Squeeze some onto here. Like that. Just gonna mix this up quick.
This stuff dries in like 20 minutes. Really fast drying. Then I'm just gonna coat this on the underside. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. We're using some of these rags. I take off these stickers too. This one. Ah. All right, I can install the new grip. Alright, new grips installed. A little bit better than the old ones. The old ones were getting really crappy, so. Alright, I think it's done. Check it out, that's the finished product. Let's go take it for a ride. Made it out to my parents' house. Got the beast unloaded. Let's throw in the GoPro, take her for a little ride. So far she's running pretty good. No problems yet. I don't know if the 4x4 works. I guess we'll find out pretty soon. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I don't know what could be the problem. But uh, we'll figure it out. All right, we're rolling. Let's take this thing for a ride. All right, gotta turn the gas on. For some reason, the uh, carburetor's leaking. I don't like that, but what can you do? Neutral, start this thing up. All right, let's see if we can go through the snow here. Oop. All right, so far so good. I think we're... Doesn't look like our four by four is working. aren't spinning in the front. These are spinning. 
What the heck? We've got the CV axle spinning, but the wheels aren't spinning. Come on, front wheels, kick in. Belt doesn't sound too good. Let's see if my brakes work. Yeah. the belt going pretty bad. Alright, so I got the, the wheel off, um, the quad here. So we're actually getting 12 volts to the wires right here, which goes down to a coil down here. And what it does is magnetize a plate and pulls the plate in. And that plate is what spins these um, hubs right here. So either the little clutch in there is all bad, or the bearings in there are bad, or something in there is bad. We're going to take this apart and figure that out. But we're getting 12 volts to this wire and 12 volts to the wire right here. So it's not the, it's not a wiring problem with the quad. It's it's something else. Um, it's probably from sitting so long. I'm guessing those plates are either damaged or stuck or rusted through or I don't know. But uh, I've had this problem before with players. Um, these 4x4 setups are just junk on these. I hate them. Nothing but problems with them. Polaris kind of sucks in that way, but they're easy to work on, so that's good. So we just need, need to figure out what's going on in there. All right, I think we found the culprit. So if you look in there, it's packed with a bunch of grease, and then I look through the little hole. It's actually an oil um, fill hole, and uh, it's just packed with grease. 
Uh, they're supposed to be fluid and they're not not grease. So that would be our problem. Um, so this whole thing needs to come out and we need to take all the grease out and then um, fill this up with oil. I believe you tilt it at like an angle like that and then fill it up until it starts pouring out. But you can see this thing has an o-ring on it. That's to keep oil in. So some guy looks like he changed out the CV axles at one point and packed it full of grease. So that's that's the problem. That little plate in there that magnetizes can't be pulled in to engage that hub. So I think once we clear up that grease we should be fine. But that, that's going to be for a different day. I think it goes pretty good. It's really light and hovers right over the snow. If we had that 4x4, four four, this thing will be done. I, other than that, she's running pretty good. And then we got to fix the carb leak too. It's leaking a little gas. But otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, we are out.